one chain, you know, AB, we finish on this chain. Which we have seen doesn't make sense or this creator was created by something because that's the implication. A further question arises, which leads us to a chain, infinite or finite, which is all irrational. All the possibilities are irrational. So we are left up with another possibility. Another possibility is that this creator did not have any beginning. And that's the only possibility which your mind can comprehend. None others. So that's your answer. The creator, who is the ultimate cause, who has no beginning, who has no end. Because if someone has no beginning, then his existence won't be influenced by others. Because nothing brought him into existence. If nothing influences his existence, his existence would have no end. So the creator is what? Eternal and everlasting. And this creator has to be one as well. This creator needs to be one. What if we have two creators? First of all, possibility says there cannot be more than one creator. I'll give you another example. Let's say there's two creators, God A and God A B. Each claiming to be absolute. Each claiming to have all power, meaning anything they can do, they can do it. You know, they wish they can do it. But let's say God A wants to create as much as this Hyde Park. God A is able to do that because he is absolutely all powerful. And God A is also able to protect the creation, this Hyde Park, because he is also all powerful. If another God, now God B, is also all powerful, and he wants to create as much as this London, including Hyde Park, and he wishes and intends to replace this Hyde Park with his own creation, two possibilities. Either he cannot replace the creation of God A, or he can. Yes? If he replaces the creation of God A, that means God A is not all powerful because he couldn't protect himself, his creation. That means you have God B, the all powerful, almighty, not God A. But if God B could not replace God A's creation, God B is not all powerful, God A is. So either way you look at it, there is only one absolute being with all the absolute attributes, all knowing, all powerful and so on. This being us one interesting point. We have established that God Almighty is one. Christians say, many of you may be Christians, they say God is a composite unity. I say this is a nonsense. Don't be insulted. I say this is a nonsense. Why? They say God is composed of three persons, each equal to each other in power, each co-eternal and co-substantial. That's what they say. The same power, they exist eternally and have the same substance and have the three points. I have a problem with that because you cannot have more than one being which is absolute, which they say co-equal, of the same power. You cannot have more than one being which is eternal. Because you cannot explain how they came, both came eternally. You cannot explain when something is eternal, how they exist in the relationship between as a son and a father. How? If both of them have no beginning. You cannot explain how one of them, which is supposed to be political, the other, humbles his will. You cannot explain how they have independent will, free will. These two gentlemen here, they have their own will. He has his own will, I have my own will. If we have a team, we are one team. But we have independent will. So we are three persons. God, if it's a composite unity with three wills, that's three gods, not one God. Because which one of them has their own will? They may wish to humble to another one and so on and so forth, but it cannot be one God. It doesn't make sense. And strangely enough, it doesn't even make sense that one of them becomes humble to the other. Because by definition and by understanding, the will of God is sovereign. His will cannot be subjugated, cannot be, you know, become humble. His God's will is command. God's will is command. So you can't say, oh, he humbled himself. He mutually agreed. You cannot say this. That goes against the concept of Almighty. So how does the Christians justify such a nonsense? It is nonsense. And I repeat, it is a nonsense. Totally irrational. 
How many of you can rationally justify this Christian belief? Please, you're welcome. As Muslims, we ask you the proof and justification for your belief. And I give my justification for what I believe. I've given you without even mentioning anything from the Quran. The last revelation which I believe in, that God is one. I have demonstrated that God is one. Demonstrated that He is all-knowing, all-powerful, has to be. All the attributes must belong to this Creator. Is, do you have any disagreement with this? They say, they say that it's like water. You have ice, you have water and you have steam. So each of them is water. Each of them is water. But they're in different forms. So that's how they say the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. Which one which one was first? I don't know, ask them. <laughs> this water is actually, if you're talking in the scientific world, it's nothing. It's H2O. Hydrogen and oxygen molecules come together by sparks, electrical sparks, and you get H2O water. So now we have a problem with this analogy. That means water was certain at times H2 and O2. God of his each beings was composed of something other than that. Even more ir irrational. Even more rational. Another point. If, let's say, all of us were 5,000 years ago in a Brazilian jungle, we had no message from any scripture, from any religious people. Can any single one of us come to the conclusion without any help of scripture, which we don't have, that God is three in one? Can any one of us come to the conclusion, because we don't have the scripture in front of us, there is no messenger, let's say, bringing us, telling us God is one or God is three. Can you come to the conclusion that God is three in one? If someone comes now, today, and says, look, I am God. How many of you do you believe in that? Regardless of what he does. You see? How many of you would believe? You'd say, now your sense of dignity and pride would come in. How can this mean man be my creator, my God? He's like me. He eats and drinks. Someone who eats, what happens to him? He or she, at certain points of time, needs to excrete. Can you imagine someone taking another person as God who goes to a toilet, just like you and me? Can you imagine this? Can you imagine? So we ask you, on what justification, what proof do you have of what you believe? This is the reason why God has given us the intellect. Use it. Use the intellect and then ascertain and verify who is truly deserving to be worthy of worship. Who is really worthy of worship? A monkey, a stone, the stars, galaxies, human beings, or the one who created everything? Or the one who created everything? The Almighty God, Allah. Call him Elian, the most beautiful name belongs to him. Call him the Ar-Rahman, the merciful, the compassionate one, the loving one. He has the most beautiful names. So on what grounds do you deny God, first of all, knowing that you have been created? And what grounds do you believe in something which doesn't make any sense? Yeah, yeah. Why did you murder Malcolm X and the Hanif Muslims and the wives and children? Why didn't you tell everyone that? Tell everyone about the spaceship that you think that's going to come and take you all up to space. The HIV drugs that we're talking about. Why don't you tell people you think white men, white men are produced by...